Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I am finally at long last benchmarking a custom Vega 64 graphics card. And on hand for testing, I have the Asus ROG Strix model, which has now been GPP'd into an Ares card. Anyway, we have the Strix version on hand for testing, but please note it's now called the Ares after Asus bent to Nvidia's will. Performance though, should be the same. Okay, so back when Vega 64 was first released, we compared it to the GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition and found it to be 5% slower on average at 1440p across 32 games. Uh, since then, we've mostly focused on Vega 56 as we've found that that's a much better value product and it stands up quite well to the competing GTX 1070 and I suppose now the 1070 Ti. Anyway, now that it's been almost a year since Vega 64 was released in its reference form, I felt it was about time we revisited it and why not do that with a custom Vega 64 graphics card? You guys have only been screaming at me to test one for the better part of a year now, so... Maybe we can do that. Uh, for comparison, I have the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X 8G, and this is the standard 10 gigabits per second GDDR5X model. Although both models are pretty heavily overclocked out of the box, we're still gonna squeeze every last bit of performance out of them with a custom overclock. Stock the Strix Vega 64 OC gaming comes clocked at 1590 MHz for the core and 950 MHz for the HBM2 memory. We were able to increase the core clock to 1700 MHz, a mere 7% overclock, and the memory to 1050 MHz, an 11% overclock. As for the GTX 1080 Gaming X8G, it comes with a base clock of 1683 MHz and 2502 MHz for the GDDR5X memory. We were able to hit 1817 MHz for the core, and this resulted in a boost frequency of about 2.1 GHz. Of course, that is depending on load. The memory also reached 2.75 gigahertz, so an 8% core overclock and a 10% memory overclock. Now, as mentioned earlier, we have 27 games in total, all of which have been tested at 1080p using both the stock and overclock configurations. However, I'm only going to discuss the results for eight of the games and then jump into our performance breakdown. The rest of the graphs will be available for free on our Patreon page, so check for the link in the video description. As usual, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal Series 570X has been used, and inside we have our Core i7 8700K clocked at 5 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. Okay, so I think that's about everything. Let's get to the good stuff. First up, we have F1 2017. Here we find very competitive performance between the two GPUs. The GTX 1080 was just 4% faster on average, but 3% slower for the 1% low result. Overclocked, the GTX 1080 does pull clearly into the lead. Having said that though, we still are only seeing a single digit percentage gain. Next up we have Wreckfest, and the first time I tested with this game, I used it to compare the RX 580 and GTX 1060, and this saw Nvidia trailing by a 10% margin for that particular comparison. However, after multiple driver updates, the GeForce performance in this title does appear to have improved somewhat. Now the GTX 1080 is able to pull ahead of Vega 64, at least when looking at the average frame rate. Here we have a title that's pretty much always favoured AMD, and that is Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. And we see that today that still remains true as the GTX 1080 was 8% slower out of the box and 4% slower once overclocked. Moving on to Far Cry 5, and here we see the Asus Vega 64 card was a smidgen quicker than the MSI GTX 1080. Then once overclocked, we see basically the same performance. Although an AMD sponsored title, Far Cry 5 is very well optimised, so I do view this as a fair fight. Then next up we have Fortnite using the Unreal Engine, which is pretty much optimized for Nvidia and Intel hardware, and this gives the GTX 1080 a rather significant 19% performance advantage. Overclocking further extends this margin out to 23%, of course in favor of the Nvidia GPU. Total War Saga, Thrones of Britannia, is the newest game added here, and we find very competitive results with Vega 64, just edging ahead for the frame time performance. Overall though, a very similar experience using either GPU. Armour 3 has now been optimised to the point where it plays very similar on AMD and Nvidia hardware, which is quite shocking because about a year ago, the Radeon performance was a disaster, so it's great to see such competitive results here. Like Fortnite, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is also built upon the Unreal Engine, and as a result favours hardware from the green team. Here we see the GTX 1080 enjoying a 14% performance advantage out of the box, making it the preferred GPU for this title. 
As for power consumption, well, as you might have expected at this point, Vega does guzzle quite a bit more power, uh, pushing total system consumption 18% higher when comparing the out-of-the-box figures. Overclock, that margin is extended to 23%, and that is the most voltaged optimized overclock we could achieve with Vega 64. Okay, so from that small eight-game sample, we saw quite a bit of back and forth between these two, though that's probably to be expected. Uh, now though, let's get the full picture by looking at the results across all 27 games tested. First up, we have the stock out of the box results comparing the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X 8G to the ASUS Strix Vega 64 OC Gaming. Here we see that the GeForce graphics card was just 5% faster on average. The outliers include Frostpunk where the GTX 1080 was 33% faster and then Dirt 4 where it was 27% slower. That said, Vega 64 also struggled quite poorly in GTA 5, Warhammer 2, Fortnite, Project Cars 2, Sniper Elite 4 when using DirectX 11 and Assassin's Creed Origins. Overclocking each graphics card extended the GTX 1080's lead out to 8%, though overall we did see very similar performance trends across the board. Overall, the GeForce graphics card was faster by a margin greater than 5% in 16 of the titles tested, and slower by a 5% or greater margin in just two of them. So a pretty clear advantage going the way of the green team here. As I noted at the start of this video, almost a year ago now, when Vega 64 was first released, we compared it to the GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition, and found it to be 5% slower on average at 1440p across 32 games. For whatever reason, that testing really seemed to stir things up. Extremists in either camp appeared quite upset with our findings, though I do typically deem our content a success if I've managed to upset fanboys on both sides. Uh, Nvidia fans were upset because I used an FE model despite the fact that I wanted to make a, a reference to reference comparison since Vega 64 cards or custom Vega 64 cards uh, weren't yet available. Then AMD fans were upset because Hell, I can't even remember why they're upset now. Uh, probably a whole heap of things that weren't really warranted or made any sense. That's typically how those things seem to go. Our uh, point is there was a big hoo-ha about uh, the results being misleading and for whatever reason, one team was going to come out well on top at some point in time for some reason. I actually said at the time that I expected custom cards, just like this one, to actually be quite a bit faster, avoid throttling, um, handle higher frequencies and just in general deliver better performance. Turns out I was pretty much wrong about that one. Almost a year later, uh, pretty much the same story, different set of games, but still a lot of games. And what we found was that 5% uh, difference going in favor of the GTX 1080 at 1440p. These findings aren't unusual either. At this point, it should be pretty common knowledge that overall the GTX 1080 is going to come out ahead uh, more often than not. I could have very easily handpicked six to nine titles to test with that would heavily favor one uh, company more than the other, but with well over a 20 game sample, you get a pretty clear picture of where things stand. When it came time to overclock, it was pretty straightforward with the GTX 1080. Vega 64 though was a different kettle of fish and I tried pretty much everything to unlock that next level performance that undervolting is said to achieve, but no matter what I tried, the end result was, well, it was pretty underwhelming every time. I also failed to find any credible sources that have shown significant performance gains from overclocking the ASUS RX Vega 64 graphics card. So at the end of the day, it seems quite clear that AMD's come up well short at the high end. Um, sure at this point, that doesn't surprise a lot of you, but we still see arguments in the comments saying that Vega 64 is now better than the GTX 1080. Uh, clearly not true. Today, the cheapest Vega 64 graphics card costs around $580 US, and that's around $100 US more than the cheapest GTX 1080 models. Uh, therefore, we don't see sense in paying around 20% more for about 5% less performance on average. That said, right now I suggest you buy neither of these products as we're knocking pretty much on the door of the next generation release from NVIDIA. So uh, really an absolutely terrible time to buy a new graphics card. I highly recommend you do not do that. Uh, also, as a side note, this video did include a lot of DX11 and DX12 testing in all the titles that supported both APIs. And I will be creating a separate video very shortly that focuses on comparing those results. So that should be quite interesting. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, please. Subscribe for more content if you're interested in more content. And if you appreciate what we do here at Unbox, then maybe support us on Patreon. 
there's some pretty cool perks there with Discord and monthly live streams. And yeah, it's a whole lot of fun. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.